What's my home worth? Real estate blog, how to hold a successful garage sale. Hey, Realtor and Area Specialist Mike and Jennifer Wrigley here bringing you the latest real estate information. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today. Today, let's talk about how to hold a successful garage sale. Seems crazy, but let's talk about it. Hey, garage sales can be a great way to get rid of clutter and earn a little couple extra bucks before you sell your home. But make sure the timing is right. Garage sales can take on a life of their own, and it might not be the best use of your time and energy right, bef right before putting your home on the market. Follow these tips for a successful sale. Number one, don't wait until the last minute. You don't want to be scrambling to hold a garage sale the week before an open house. Depending on how long you've lived in the home and how much stuff you have to sell, planning a garage sale can demand a lot of time and energy. Number two, <clears throat> see if your neighbors want to join in. You can turn your garage sale into a block-wide event and lure more shoppers if you team up with neighbors. However, a permit may be necessary for each homeowner, even if it's a group event, so be careful. Number three, schedule the sale. Sales on Saturdays and Sundays will generate the most traffic, especially if the weather cooperates. Start early, 8 a.m., maybe even 7, not, no later than 9, and be prepared for the early birds. Number four is advertise. Place an ad in free classified papers and websites like Craigslist in your local newspaper. Include the dates and times and address. Let the public know if certain types of items will be sold, such as baby clothes, furniture, weightlifting equipment. On the day of the sale, balloons and signs with prominent arrows will help to grab the attention of passerbys. Number five is price your goods. Lay out everything that you plan to sell and attach prices with removable stickers. Remember, garage sales are supposed to be bargains, so try to be objective if you set prices. Assign simple prices to your goods, 50 cents, 3 for a dollar, 5 for 10, exactly. Uh, if it's really junk, don't sell it. Decide what's worth selling and what's not. If it's really garbage, then throw it away. Broken appliances, for example, should just be tossed. You know, make sure that you also got a nearby electrical outlet in case a customer wants to check out something to make sure that it works. Number seven is check for mistakes. Make sure that items you want to keep don't accidentally end up in the garage sale pile. Could be a problem. Eight, create an organized display. Lay out your items by category and display neatly so customers don't have to dig through the boxes. Number nine is stock up on bags and newspapers. People who buy many small items will appreciate a bag to carry their goods. And newspapers are handy for wrapping up the fragile items. Number 10 is manage your money. Make a trip to the bank to get ample change for your cash box. Throughout the sale, keep a close eye on your cash. Never leave the cash box unattended. It's smart to have one person who manages the money throughout the whole day. Keep an tally of what was purchased and for how much. And keep a calculator nearby. And number 11 is prepare your home for sale. Donate the remaining stuff or sell it to a resale shop. Now that all of your clutter is cleared out, it's time to focus on preparing your house for a successful sale. Now, will ever wonder what your home is worth? Call us today at 916-396-7487 for a free, no obligation consultation. Or log on to www.wrigleyrealtygroup.com to find out. Call us today. You'll be glad you did. And we'll look forward to hearing from you.